Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today's video should be pretty short and sweet. And uh, just up front, I'm sorry I haven't been making videos. Uh, you know, it's the holidays, catching up, doing some other life stuff. Been on the hunt for a business center console for the Dodge Ram Daytona. Um, they're really hard to find. So if you have a third gen and you're looking for one of these uh, business center consoles, uh, you're, you know you're looking at five to six maybe, in some cases $800. And I just refuse to pay that. It's too damn high. So I'm gonna tell y'all where I found mine. I found mine on LKQ, right? Uh, and the place I got mine, you don't pull the parts, they pull them for you. So it's kind of a gamble. So you pay for it up front. If it's not the part you want, you get a refund right then and there. Um, and I had to call because in the photo, I could kind of see the front portion of the center console, but I couldn't see the whole thing. So I called and I was like, hey, can you just pull it? The guy said, yeah, send me an invoice. Uh, I paid it, went and picked it up and it happened to be the right console. Now there's only a few things that I got to fix or touch up, but it's nothing too major that, you know, would deter me from buying it, especially when I only paid 140 bucks. So big steal. Here we've got the center console. Now one of the first things that I'm kind of bummed about, it's actually two pieces, is that the cable that connects to this back cigarette lighter or your 12 volt power source, uh, they ended up just cutting it. So I'm gonna have to add some wire to go to the front, to go to the cigarette lighter that I have. And just like I said, it's dirty, gotta clean it up. But for the price I paid, it's not too bad. Also on top of the lid, I don't know they were playing like Russian roulette or something here with a knife, but you can kind of see this little cut right there. And the back here is peeling up just a bit from age. You can see the crease right there. So when you go to open the lid, it catches a little bit right there. So maybe I can find the new lid. Another thing you might notice is the color. Um, it's not gonna match my interior because my interior is all black. So I am gonna clean this up and paint it today. And then we'll mess with getting it inside the Daytona. Dude over there again, his carpet cleaned, making all that noise. But Tell him to keep it down. Check it out. This top part cleaned up pretty good. Yeah, there's still some dirt in there, but I mean, it cleaned up really good. So pretty happy. You can see some scuff marks down there. Old boy had his pistol. I uh, cleaned up the under uh, underneath uh, as well. I took out all these rubber pieces, man, and I sprayed them and pretty gross. You see that this one's still kind of dirty. I've been scrubbing it for a little while now. I did want to take this off. Uh, the little netting but it's those kind of uh clips that are going to be expensive and it's going to be a lot harder to put this back on than it's really worth so we're painting right over that i'll try to mask it i'll do something i'll clean up this side right here so pretty much what i'm gonna do now is uh, try to test fit just this front piece and see how this end goes into where the cup holders are so the first thing i gotta do is remove the cup holders out of the daytona so let's get started all right, so if you haven't seen this, this is my setup I got going on. We got the jump seat, which is in really good shape. Probably uh, not hang on to this and sell it if this works out. So anyways, these are the cup holders I got. I just don't like how they're down here. Uh, if anything falls over, like I've had a shaker cup fall over, it goes directly on the carpet, which I'm gonna replace anyway. Um, and these don't really hold us either. They're pretty shallow. So if you got like a shaker cup up here, it'll just tumble over. Secondly, this cubby hole let me tell you every time i put something in there it'll come flying out i could be standing still and it'll freaking fly out that's why i like the business center console it's got that cubby in the front all right enough complaining here let me start ripping this thing apart soon after all right got the cup holder out to get this big piece it's just one screw that's right there and then now you can just pop the whole thing off and then you just unplug the cigarette lighter and then your hvac controls and you can remove that and you don't need to remove these top ones up here. That was my fault. But you do need to remove these two, and then there's two on the bottom to get the cup holder out. So, nice. Now I'm gonna see if that one piece will fit in here. All right, we're officially at the part of the video where it's starting to get really involved here. So, I ended up having to pull that entire lower dash panel out completely. It's right there. There it is. Because I need to be able to line this thing up as close as possible so I can see how much of this lower cubby I'm gonna have to mess with. So let's take a closer look here and see uh, what's going on. All right, so this entire thing, this is what the glove box is. It's all just a bunch of Phillips. Uh, so basically what we're looking at is kind of the cubby where the cup holders go and where this part 
of the business console is going into. Now we're officially at the part of the video where I have no idea what I'm doing. Basically it's got to go in there, something like that. The only good news is that there's a lot of these at the junkyard, so I'm not really too worried about it. That lower dash panel part, but oh dang, it's not how I want it today to go. So, oh, it's gonna take a lot of measuring. So, to make sure I get the right measurements, it's gonna be a lot of moving stuff around. I'm gonna go ahead and take my center jump seat out now so I can get this thing lined up and then put the dash in place and kind of start seeing where I need to start cutting or measuring and all that kind of stuff. I, yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing now. I just know we're gonna make it fit. Alrighty. So here we've got the center console. I only put one nut on, on the bottom right there, uh, because I know I'm gonna be removing this to paint it, obviously. Uh, and I've got to clean underneath the rug. I thought I had to make a new harness, but no, my harness is still intact. All I gotta do is plug it into the back and everything will be good. So we got this thing in place right here. Uh, the seats aren't bolted in at all. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this piece right here, place it up, and then the bottom piece of the dash again, so we can measure up. All right, so just by putting this piece in, in the middle, I realized that you have to do a lot of trimming. So anyways, let's keep going, figure this thing out. All right, so I'm just gonna document everything I'm doing. Here we've got some, uh, got some blue tape, as you can tell, I'm really trying to figure this thing out. So it's not sitting flush up against this part because there's one little thing sticking out that we're just gonna dremel right off. And I'm gonna go ahead and sharpie where this ends up and then we're just gonna keep doing this little dance back and forth so you all right underneath the cup holder this is sticking up too high as you can see right there and is that a bumblebee back up brother so anyways you got to cut this off um, because it won't let it sit flush the way it's supposed to and we need this to sit completely flush that way we know where to cut the dash piece all right guys just remember if you're gonna dremel anything or cut anything always have some of my protection. These are some 3M that I got from like Walmart or Home Depot and uh, let me do the job. So just always wear eye protection. Many unbearable hours later. All right, here is the, for the most part, what the final installed product is going to look like. I know one of the main concerns is always this area down here, sadly. I don't have the piece that goes with the 06s. Um, so I kept the one that my truck came with and I put it down in the lower dash piece. And you're probably wondering how the heck did I get this in there? Well, the answer is a Dremel and a lot of patience. So I put this tape down to sort of outline where the business center console ended. You can see some of the marks up there in the front and I did so on both sides and then I removed it and I put the lower dash piece in um, with the cup holders removed, but leaving the change cubby, right? And then it was just a lot of trimming and measuring, trimming and measuring. I mean, pretty much just hours of that. So once I got this piece in, I was like, okay, now I got this ugly hole over here where the original cup holders go and I didn't know what to do about it. So I thought maybe I could cover it with just the door. So basically that's what I did was I took the door, took some measurements, and then I started cutting and measuring and dremeling until I got it to fit there. And now this is where things get complicated. So I can actually just pull this off. And there you see the old cup holders. So I finished all my big cuts and you can see right there that's still kind of touching but it's not really getting in the way so the pretty much the bottom half of the cup holder basically wherever you put that cut you got to cut all that out and that is exactly what i did but once you cut the bottom piece out of this cup holder this back piece has nothing to hang on to now that's where you see those two bolts right there so i got everything nice and loose still so I can walk y'all through this. Okay, they tell the bezel, come on out. I'm even plugged in, okay. So it's this bracket right here that connects to the dash right there. And then it's got two other screws behind the cup holder that bolted into uh, the back here, making it nice and sturdy. So because I had 
nothing to connect this to because I cut it all out. I just drilled two holes, uh, two pilot holes, and here I got some screws and the nuts are, well, there's gonna be two nuts that go underneath to, you know, sandwich that up a little higher. Um, but that's how I'm keeping that piece sturdy. It still plays uh, just a little bit, but when you put, or when I put this top uh, dash panel in, it holds it nice and tight. And you saw that finished product that I had earlier. None of this is bolted in yet. This is still just in place because I still got to pull it out, finish cleaning it, and then painting it black to match the rest of the interior. All right, guys, day two update. So the dash is still put together from what I showed you guys yesterday. Uh, now I'm going to take everything apart because I got to finish cleaning the center console. And I also want to wire up the 12 volt outlets because this lid on the inside has a 12 volt power source and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to use for my phone. Um, and there's one in the back too. So I just want to make sure that they both work and then we'll go ahead and pull everything out, finish getting it cleaned up and getting it painted. So let's get started. All right, so this is the connector for um, the truck, the body harness. And that connector right there is the one for the center console. Now this one's a three prong. This one's a, it's looking like a one prong. All right, so now we're gonna have to get creative. Let me go ahead and get the other harness to see what I can come up with. Alrighty, so I figured out how to power up the center console. So basically what I did was I took the pigtail that was connected that I thought was cut off. And I'm actually happy that they left this much wire when they cut it off. So I went ahead and stripped the wires back and you've got your pretty much power and ground wires. So ground is black. And then the two power wires are yellow and pink and blue and red. The yellow and blue you don't use. So I'm just gonna cut this one off shorter here at the end of the pigtail once I'm ready. Here's the pigtail uh, to the original truck harness. Uh, I already cut it and spliced it and checked everything. And it's the red and blue and the black. So the black is gonna go with the black and that's gonna be your ground. And then your red and blue and your pink and yellow are gonna go to the red and blue like that on the actual harness of the truck. Now, once I'm done doing all that, I'm just gonna splice them together and then I'm gonna solder them together. Got some solder here, I got my little soldering gun. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, heat shrink around the solders before I actually solder it because you can't put it on afterward. And then I got some wire loom right here that I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up in. And of course, some electrical tape to make everything nice and clean. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is go ahead and solder all these things together and that part will be done. So let me get started. All right, ton of cutting, ton of soldering later. Here is the final product. So you can see I cut off the yellow one like I said I would and now we just gotta hook it up. Not bad for a can of spray. Just need a little bristle brush like this and a rag. So I took apart the lid because when I open it, I don't want to see any gray like you can see right here. And you can actually see some more dirt that I got to finish cleaning up. But basically I've got quite a bit of masking off to do right around this edge and to cover all of this because I don't want to get any paint inside of here, just along the edges where all this stuff is. I'm gonna to have to do the same for the second layer and it's good that I'm doing this so everything can dry out but I'm gonna take this uh, apart as well so I can get this handle out and that way I can paint everything around it without getting any paint on the handle and then of course the same right here I think for this bottom box um, I'm not too worried about it I'll paint all of this right here so anyways these pieces not a big issue it's just really these lids all right here's the top lid this is the bottom you just take out all these Phillips head screws. This piece comes out along with the padding. And then you gotta take this bracket off with the longer uh, hex heads. And then you can take off the handle with the Phillips head as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish and taking apart the rest of the box and then continue to lay these out in the sun so they dry and then we'll start painting it. All right, I decided that I don't want to tape off a bunch of stuff. So I completely took the box apart except for this back door because the inside's already black, so, and no one ever sits in the back of my truck anyway. Uh, but the lid, I was able to pop all the inserts out. Even on this one, you can see the inserts out. 
one thing I did kind of tape off was this, uh, these rubber pieces that go right there. But you don't even really see that. And on a scale of need it black or leave it tan or gray, uh, they can stay gray. So, yep, just tape those off. Not a big deal. Everything else took apart. Now, we're just waiting for them to dry and then we'll start painting. All right, guys, so I got the whole thing painted. Uh, the top part is right here, still drying, um, but everything is painted, everything is done. I put it all back together. Decided to save you guys the headache of watching me put it all together. But as you can see, everything's black underneath. There's no uh, leftover silver, except for right here, which kind of gives it a cool little contrast, I think. So not too bad, but again, everything underneath is black. Everything inside is black and all the sides are black. So now, while that piece is drying, I'm gonna start putting this piece in between the seats. Once you take the jump seat out, you put the big portion of the center console back in and it bolts directly into place. The only thing you do have to do is take off the jump seat seat belts. That way the back of the center console will actually sit flush and you can put the two nuts on there. Other than that, everything bolts into place and I put everything together. Um, only downfall is that it just smells like paint inside my truck. Uh, but it's pretty warm outside, so it should help finish letting it cure. But let me show you guys the finished product. All right, guys, here it is. The business console inside a third gen. Uh, painted all black. And show you guys. So when you open the lid, I still got finished cleaning this plastic. It just didn't come out as clean as I wanted it to. But you can see, you pop the lid, everything's nice and black. There's no gray. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, got my little power hooked up there nothing down there either but as you can see everything's nice and black except for these two rubber pieces that are gray and we got the cup holders i got the rubber inserts inside the house still drying you can see where i dremeled this out now the only thing i got to finish doing is cleaning up these edges for some reason i didn't clean up this edge at all but i cleaned up this one you can tell the difference so Sometime in the future, like I said, I either want to clean this rug or pull it out, but I know I'm going to put different seats in here. So when I do that, I'll go ahead and clean up this edge because all of this has to come out again. But yeah, other than that, that's what it looks like. Nice and black. And one thing to point out is for some reason, this console didn't have the rear AC. So there's no, there's no vents back there, which is pretty nice. Now I don't have to, you know, pretend like my AC back there doesn't work or something. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I know it's a long one and kind of all over the place because I was straight up just trying to figure out how to do this myself for the first time. If I had to do it a second time, I think I would do it a lot faster. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. If you like this video, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and make sure you subscribe. Until next time, guys, peace out.